Hi Bobcats! In this section, we're going to explore some of these new tools that became available to scientists uh, that helped to uh, explore the structure of the atom. So our objective for this, this lecture is to describe these new tools that included things like x-rays, alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, and how these uh, these types of radiation interacted with matter. From that, scientists were able to figure out uh, the structure of matter as atoms. In the late 1800s, William, Wilhelm Röntgen was able to um, create a stable source of x-rays, and um, he discovered that these x-rays could penetrate soft tissues but wouldn't penetrate bones, and so you could actually create images of your bones um, by using x-rays. Um, x-rays are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, the electromagnetic spectrum is basically light. The portion of light that we can see with our eyeballs is referred to as visible light. Um, there are other portions of the spectrum. For instance, if you get to a little bit more energy than visible light, you're in the ultraviolet. If you go to a little bit less energy than the visible light, you're talking infrared. Um, and it includes x-rays, gamma rays, micro, microwaves. Um, there are various portions of the spectrum. But x-rays are the ones that we can uh, use to see through soft tissues. And Rentgen discovered those around 1895. Around the same time, maybe a year later, uh, the French scientist Henri Becquerel discovered uh, the concept of radioactivity. What he discovered was that there were uh, photographic plates in his lab that had just been sitting around in his lab that had not been used yet, but they had already been exposed somehow. And um, they, 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 even though after the plates had been prepared, um, they were stored in such a way that they weren't exposed to light, somehow when they went to use them, they discovered that the plates really had been exposed already. And they were able to trace this down to a bottle of uranium salts. Um, and for instance, in this uh, image that's shown here, you can see in the bottom portion, there's the image of a cross. Um, basically, uh, they took the bottle of uranium salts and they put it um, on top of a metal cross, and then they put that metal cross on top of the photographic plates, and they were able to create an image of the cross with the, the photographic plate, even though they never exposed the photographic plate to light. Um, this was kind of puzzling. Um, the radiation coming from uh, the uranium salts was responsible for exposing the photographic plates, and uh, the Curies, Marie and Pierre Curie, uh, decided that what must be happening is that there were nuclear reactions taking place in the uranium atoms. And Marie Curie called this spontaneous um, emission of radiation as part of these nuclear reactions uh, radioactivity. She created that word, radioactivity. It turned out there were three types of radioactivity emitted from radioact radioactive substances. Uh, one way that they could be distinguished was by how they reacted in, in an electric field. Um, one type of this radiation just passed straight through undeflected in a, a an electric field, and that type was called gamma rays. So uh, gamma rays are these ones right here with the pink arrow. Uh, that's the lowercase Greek letter gamma. If I write that by hand, I tend to write it this way, something like that. Um, some of these, um, some of the particles coming out of this radioactive substance would deflect so that it would bend towards the positive side of the electric field. And the ones that move toward the positive side are referred to as beta rays. And so they must have a negative charge associated with them. And then some of the particles coming out of this radioactive source would deflect towards the negative plate of the electric field and so they must be positively charged, and those things uh, were referred to as alpha rays. So uh, scientists are being really creative here with these three forms of radiation, calling one alpha, one beta, and one gamma 
the first three letters of the Greek alphabet. In addition to the differences in charge among the three types of radiation, there's also a difference in how deeply the types of radiation can penetrate matter. This is referred to as the penetrating power. Alpha radiation has very, very little penetrating power, and something as thin as paper is usually capable of stopping it. Uh, clothing will stop it as long as there aren't um, holes because of the weave of the, the clothing. Uh, beta radiation can uh, pass right through paper, but it'll be stopped by something like wood. And then gamma radiation has the strongest penetrating power of all. It'll blow right through paper, right through wood, but it will be stopped by a thick layer of lead or concrete. Now, this is important to know if you're ever working around a radioactive source. Um, if you're working with something that's an alpha emitter, you can just grab a cardboard box and place that cord cardboard box around your alpha emitter and you'll be pretty well protected from the radiation. Uh, if you're working with a beta emitter, you can build a box out of wood to enclose your apparatus and that should be pretty good protection. But for gamma, you've got to get a bit more sophisticated. Um, you're going to need some sort of a uh, concrete bunker or lead bricks. Uh, lead bricks are often used in a lab setting where you are frequently changing around the configuration of your equipment because you can restack the lead bricks as you need and as they're needed. Um, something like a concrete bunker, um, it's really hard to pour a new bunker every time you decide to change your apparatus. Um, gamma rays are just one step higher on the energy scale than x-rays. So what I'm saying about gamma rays pretty well applies to x-rays too. And x-rays are something that you're likely to encounter um, in your lifetime, whether you're uh, at the dentist and having x-rays taken or whether um, you're you're concerned that you may have broken your arm and so you're having x-rays of your arm taken. Um, and if you work around x-rays, like if you're working in a medical setting where x-rays are routinely taken, um, you want to make sure that you follow all the safety protocols to protect yourself from those x-rays. Uh, for somebody who's not working in the medical field, like me, going in and getting an x-ray has such a, a, a small uh, dose of x-ray radiation that it's not anything I'm concerned about. But the people who operate the x-ray machines day in and day out, or who are in areas where these machines are used all the time run the risk of exposure um, to x-rays that could potentially be damaging. And so you want to make sure that you're following all the protocols so that you're not being exposed. Um, often that'll include things like standing in a particular spot um, because that spot is well shielded. Um, it might be shielded by lead, might be shielded by concrete, um, but you definitely want to make sure you follow those protocols to protect yourself. Nobody is as invested in protecting your skin as you are. Well, from the perspective of science in 2020, um, here's what we know now about these three types of radiation. Alpha radiation um, is actually uh, the helium nucleus uh, that has um, been imparted a lot of energy by nuclear reactions, and it's the, the helium nuclei have been released. Uh, there are no electrons associated with this to balance charge, so the alpha radiation has a charge of plus two. Beta radiation will be high energy electrons coming out of nuclear reactions, um, so they have a negative charge, and uh, back in the day these were referred to as cathode rays. And then gamma radiation is simply part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, it's a form of light, so there's no charge associated with it. Once scientists had discovered alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, um, they set up experiments to see what would happen when these types of radiation interacted with matter. One of the, the first of the um, experimental apparatuses that was 
developed um, is something called a Crookes tube. In um, our modern uh, language, we would probably call this a cathode ray tube or a CRT. Um, so that's the image that I pulled up here, uh, a CRT perhaps from some sort of display screen. Um, this website here has a lot of really cool stuff about Crookes tubes or CRTs. Um, so if you're kind of a history buff, uh, history of science buff, um, this is actually a really interesting website to go and check out. So our objective was to take a look at some of the new tools, things like x-rays, alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, um, and um, just see what these tools are that scientists were using to explore the structure of matter.